Hey, welcome in on a Sunday morning, 104.5 WOKV Jacksonville's News and Talk. And as we do every Sunday morning, we are protecting military families with the one and only Chris Brochu. Exciting episode for you today. We have a guest with us in studio that we will introduce to you in just a second. But as we do on a Sunday morning, Chris, first off, how are you? Casey, good morning. I'm doing great. I'm super excited for today's episode. I am as well. But before we get into it, Chris, why don't you tell the people about the Brochu Law Second Opinion? Yep, absolutely. As always, second opinion. If you listen to the show every week, you already know this. If you're new to the show, the brochure law second opinions, pretty straightforward. Um, if you ever need uh, someone to take a review of your military benefits, your legal cr- claims, um, anything that you have accident wise, injury wise, life insurance, and somebody has told you, hey, this is all you're ever going to get, or the VA says this is the maximum amount of uh you know, disability rating that you're going to get, give us a call. Um, we're happy to look at any of your, your loan documents related to military lending, right? All of these things are involved in the second opinion. Our second opinion is, um, is free to military families and consumers. And basically it's a free consultation where we will discuss your claim or your injury case or whatever legal question you have. And it's free to the Um, consumer and military family, if we decide to work together, we'll enter into a fee agreement. And if we decide that there's something we can assist you with, that fee agreement is on a contingency fee basis. So um, the only way we get paid is if the military family or consumer gets paid. We advance all costs on behalf of our clients. We're never going to ask you for any money up front. And um, our guest today, I'm sure, operates on the same way, but I'm going to let him... um, discuss it with you. He also represents people. His name is Ethan Babb, and he is going to give all of our listeners out there a an opportunity to um, not only talk about what to do during a hurricane, but those Floridians that are affected by Hurricane Ian. That's going to be the top of our show today, and stick around before the break. We're going to talk to Ethan about what a hurricane Ian claim is worth and um, how you evaluate those types of claims. So without further ado, Ethan Babb, welcome to the show. So happy to have you. Chris, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Um, so Ethan, tell us a little bit about, you know, what, what firm you're at, Lacey Lyons, Rosanka, um, where is that out of, what types of cases do, do you and your firm handle? Our firm is based in Melbourne, Florida. We also have an office in Rockledge, but we serve the entire state of Florida. We're a full service law firm that we do business and commercial litigation, real estate closings and estate planning, zoning and land use. But my focus is on first party property insurance claims. I help homeowners and business owners whose properties have been damaged. And I deal with delayed claims, underpaid claims, and I also help people file their claims from the inception. In doing so, I also work in conjunction with public adjusters and different contractors, roofing contractors, uh, water mitigation companies. So first party property, just to kind of unpack that a little bit for the listeners, that's essentially roofing claims, pipe claims, storm claims, hail, wind, flooding, hurricane, or are those all under the same first property umbrella? Yes, and any any sort of real property. So I, I don't deal with vehicles or, or boats, but any sort of r- real property that has experienced the damage and that property owner's insurance company is not doing the right thing, that's where I come in. Okay. And then the other thing I want you to, to talk about a little bit too, Ethan, is when you say a public adjuster, let's talk about what a public adjuster is and what they do and how you work with them in these types of claims. So a public adjuster, a lot of times people hear that and they think, oh, well, that's uh, the insurance company's adjuster, but there's there's a difference. So you have the insurance adjuster who works on behalf of the insurance company representing the insurance company's interest. They come out and they assess the claim on behalf of the insurance company. What public adjusters do, and they, they work on a contingency agreement with property owners, is they come out and they represent the interest of the, the property owner. They do, a, they do a scope of work, they assess the damages, and they'll handle the claim for the property owner going back and forth with the insurance company trying to achieve the maximum recovery for the property owner. But at the end of the day, a public adjuster is not an attorney, so oftentimes once they have 
received the denial that they can't get overturned or if they've received an amount that is undervaluing the, the, the claim and the full scope of damages, then a lot of times they would recommend that their client reach out to an attorney, and oftentimes that's an attorney such as myself. Okay. And I want to talk right now, you know, obviously we have Hurricane Ian was a um, major, major storm here in Southwest Florida. So if we could, let's talk about now that Hurricane Ian has happened, what do Florida homeowners need to do? What what do they need to do to file their claims and protect their families? For one, they need to reach out to the insurance company sooner rather than later. Uh, one of the number one reasons that insurance companies deny claims are for late reporting. They, they'll they take the position that they've been prejudiced and that they haven't been able to see the damage firsthand for themselves. And after the fact, they're not able to make an accurate assessment of what the cause of loss was or what the damages are to the property. So when we see the eye of the hurricane traveling over Southwest Florida, hitting Sanibel and Cape Coral and Fort Myers Beach, what is the, walk me through the timeline of, okay, so the, you know, the, the home that is gone, how would, let's start with that, that family how would they go about their first party property claim? At that point, they're they're going to need to make a call to their insurance company. Some insurance companies also have online portals, and that's also a way that they their insured submit claims to them. But they would just need to reach out and and call in the claim. Um, now, can you help them call in the claim? I have in certain instances. Um, I have had people who have reached out to me directly. Um, more often than not, a lot of people are reaching out to me after they've received a, a denial or after they've received a, an estimate from the insurance company that is obvious that it doesn't cover what is needed to get get their property back in order. Now, when you know we see the aftermath and the pictures of all these different um, families that are affected, I mean, we see the causeway going out to Sanibel Island. I think it was Sanibel or or captiva or one of those and and the causeway is just gone right and we know that there are tons of families affected before they ever start cleaning up any debris or doing anything they should probably take pictures of of their property and and damage is that right a- absolutely so and you, that's very unfortunate what happened there and you know that's as as bad as it can get um what, but you know oftentimes during these things you know, you're not thinking of taking pictures. You're not take, thinking of taking videos, but it is important to do. Also, as part of your insurance policy, there are what are called your duties after loss or your post-loss obligations, and those include you know, timely reporting. And then another important one is mitigating your damages, which simply means to stop the bleeding. So if you have a, let's say it's a opening in your roof, it's your responsibility as a homeowner to get a company out there to tarp your roof to, to, to stop the damage from worsening. Also, if you have water that's inside of your home, it's also your responsibility to try to get a, a water mitigation company out there to start drying it out before it gets worse. And is that the typical defense that you see these insurance companies making is, hey, even though Hurricane Ian came out and completely obliterated your home, Ethan, you, you should have gotten back here even though the causeway was gone and you should have made sure that you mitigated your damages. Is that is that something that you see? Somewhat. What, what we're going to see a lot more with Hurricane Ian, more so than denials, what we're going to see is underpayments. That That's going to be the big thing. And describe that. And we we talk about this. I I say it to people that call me. I say it to my clients. I mean, we get into active litigation in in different cases and you always see different things right they send the premium check back or they do different things to try <laughs> to bait the the consumer into essentially forfeiting a claim what when you say underpayment let's talk about that walk me through what does an underpayment look like in a in a property insurance case so when so when a property owner calls in their insurance claim and the insurance company sends out their adjust who's working on the behalf of the insurance company and really representing and protecting the insurance company's interest, they write up a scope of work 
their assessment of the damages. And this is why it's important for a homeowner to have professional representation or assistance on their side, whether that's an attorney, public adjuster, or at the very least hiring a contractor to help them come up with their own assessment of the damages. Because what will happen is the insurance company's adjuster will write write up a scope of work and it's like, yeah, you know what? It's $30,000 worth of damages here. And as a homeowner, you know, you're a lay person, you're not a contractor, you're not a public adjuster. This is not something that you deal with every day. You look at the check for $30,000 and you think to yourself, well, sure, if they say that's what it'll take to get my home back in order, that's what it'll take. Then you find out down the road that that it's not. And that's that's where the underpayments co- come into play, where the, the insurance company is telling you, here's $30,000 to get your property back in order, when in all actuality, you need 90000 or or even more than that. And the, the insurance companies, how they take advantage of not only their um, homeowners, but, you know, in, in the life insurance cases that I work with, how we see it is they'll come up with some exclusion that's non-existent. Oh, you forgot to do this, or we can't pay because of that, right? And the worst part is that that representation that that life insurance company made the beneficiary or the homeowner or whoever the person is that's working with that insurance company, they take it as gospel because they believe in what their insurance company is telling them. And they would say, well, why would they ever tell me? Why would they lie to me? <laughs> would, would an, why would an insurance company lie to me? Right? right. And do you, do you also see that? I mean, people, when, when I hear my clients People trust their insurance company to do the right thing. And it makes sense, right? You pay premiums every single month and you never file a claim for years, right. years and years and years and years and years. And then all of a sudden something bad happens and what do they do? They deny your claim right. or they, they try to underpay you. Um, it really comes from the past. The way the insurance companies do business and even their marketing has changed once upon a time there was a little bit more leeway to rely upon and trust in your insurance company. And that's what their I marketing agree. used to be centered around. But that marketing has now changed because that's no longer the position that they take. They're no longer your neighbor, or your friend that's there. Now their marketing, if you notice, is things will happen. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's it. Yeah. It's not, we'll be there when things happen and we'll do the right thing when things happen. It's just things will happen. So you'll need to have us. And they're, it's not that heart-centered approach anymore. They have taken this approach of it is part of their business model for many of these companies to deny claims or underpay claims because it allows them to keep more money for their bottom line. And how do you determine or what goes into the evaluation of what a Hurricane Ian uh, property claim is worth or the value of that? So we started getting into that a little bit, but before we hit the break, I want to make sure that we tell the listener about it so that they understand the value of filing one of these claims. So the value is going to come down to what is necessary to repair your property and to replace your belongings. The The property side of it is a little more clear cut in that you could simply have a contractor come up with a scope of work of what it's going to take to get the property back to its pre-loss condition. As for your personal property, that's going to, that gets a little tricky because it can depend upon the coverage is that you have a lot of times I think that people underestimate how much their personal property is worth. And at the end of the day, you're going to be capped at whatever the maximum is on that, that coverage. A lot of times we don't realize how much we spend accumulating all of the things that we have over time. And I think a lot of times people are better insured on the property front than they are for their personal items. Right. Consumerism in America with Amazon has never been easier. Right. I think I ordered something last night. You just literally swipe. You don't. You can't see that on the radio, folks. But it's just my finger going left to right across my iPhone. Um, so what types of clients need to file claims? Or I guess what what types? I mean, if you're a person, because I think everybody this this has this stigma, and I see it in injury cases. They don't want to be the guy that files a lawsuit. They don't want to be the person that files a claim against their insurance, why maybe they don't think that they don't think of themselves that way or they think that, you know, everybody that does that is an ambulance chaser or that maybe um, their insurance premiums are going to go up. So just be cheaper to stay quiet. What, why um, is, you know, 
why is that bad? And, and who, who needs to, to look at their property insurance and, and figure out if they need to file a claim? Anyone who has experienced any sort of damage, and there's also a thing of hidden or unnoticed damage as well. At the end of the day, the average person does not go inspecting their roof, nor would they know what to look at. So that's something that they need to have a professional come out and take a look at because what happens is down the line, another storm happens or there's a hailstorm, and that damage that you didn't take care of from this current hurricane will then be used against you for the insurance company then saying at the time of there being another event in the future, well, this is previous damage that was never taken care of and you had no no idea that it was even there. So as far as also why you need to submit the claim, uh, because for one thing, it's it's part of your obligations under your insurance contract to make your insurance company aware of any damage that happens to your property. Really, you're doing a disservice to yourself by not submitting a claim or not bringing it to their attention if there's some sort of damage to your property. For one thing, you, you've paid for this coverage. That this is the purpose of having it. Agree 100%. I mean, why would you need to have insurance or be paying for insurance if you didn't need it? And most of the time, I mean, obviously, if you have a um, if you have a lender, right? If somebody if somebody has a loan on their home, then their lender is going to require property insurance, right? Absolutely. What um, what happens in an instance where um, somebody is self insured? So, is there any uh, liability on any party. I mean, obviously they don't have an insurance company to go after, but can they tap into their neighbor's homeowner's insurance? Like for instance, Hurricane Ian, a tree from their neighbor's yard falls onto their house. The house that it lands on is self-insured. They don't have insurance to tap into. Their neighbor does. Can they tap into that insurance because it wasn't their tree? That gets a little tricky as far as on. In, I don't on mean to Florida put you law. on the spot. I thought <laughs> of that far. when you were describing it. I was like, I gotta ask this. This is there, there, it's a really complicated analysis as far as who's responsible for when a tree falls here in Florida. But as far as uh, neighboring property goes, if an, if there's damage that's caused to your property by a neighboring property, there is the possibility for you to submit a claim to their insurance. However, there's more of a benefit to being able to submit claims to your own insurance. When you submit a, a claim against someone else's insurance, it's what we call a third-party insurance claim. So the, the tricky part about a third-party insurance claim is that you don't have a contract with that insurance company. So really your claim is against their insured. And with that being said, you don't have the ability to recover attorney's fees if you're going after somebody in a third-party position. You have more rights and protection with your own insurance. And going back to the what we were just talking about as far as having a lender, something else that people should be wary of is that if you don't if you don't pay for your homeowner's insurance and you have a lender on the property, they're not going to allow your property to go uninsured. And at that point, that's when we have what's called forced place insurance or lender place insurance that's put on the property. And that's something that all homeowners need to try their best to avoid. We saw that a lot during the foreclosure crisis where people weren't making their mortgage payments they, and then in turn weren't making their insurance payments. And then the insurance company, the mortgage company rather, went and got their own insurance. And the problem with the forced place or lender placed insurance is that the premiums are higher, 30 to 40 percent higher. And then the, the worst part of it is you're not a named insured majority of the times on those policies. Only your mortgage company is. Got it. Meaning it's their uh, claim to bring, not yours. Correct. And I, I do appreciate you clarifying, Ethan. The example I gave to Ethan was actually uh, way more complex than I thought because <laughs> we're here talking about first-party property claims, meaning a claim against your own insurance company, not a claim against your neighbor, which would be third-party. So you're you're getting your whole legal run-through today. Uh, here, folks, you're getting to learn that a third party claim is against your neighbor and a first party claim is against the insurance company that you contracted with. And um, Casey, do we have enough time to get into our next topic? I'm not sure if we're if we're running short or what. Well, Chris, you tell me we've got about three minutes. You want to save it? Cause um, we, we got some stuff we can talk about as well. I, I really want to save it because I want when we come back, 
on the other side of the break, folks, we're going to be talking with Ethan a lot more, but we're going to be talking about the other types of storm um, damage claims that we see here in Florida. So, for instance, I'd love to hear Ethan's take on hail, wind, flooding, um, any other types of first-party property claims that he sees. I know that this is, you know, a huge... Um, we, the Florida legislature has a uh, big bone to pick with property insurance, right? We've, we've seen everybody's talking about it, how insurance companies are leaving. Allegedly, we have all these people that are um, now a- unable to find insurance and, and they're now self-insured. We're going to fact check all of that for you and see what we can uh, find truth or false in. And before we hit the break, I just want to let you know, um, my wife and I are doing our event this upcoming Friday. So um, Friday, November 11th, Veterans Day from noon to four, Pets for Vets at Jacksonville Humane Society on Southside. Any military family that goes to purchase a pet between noon and four that day, we are going to cover the adoption fee for any dogs and cats. I don't think they have any exotic animals there. I could be wrong. Um, but dogs, cats, you know, kittens, I, I know they, they have a lot of kittens, but I think they're hurricane season that kind of uh, runs parallel with mm-hmm. kitten season is coming to an end. But um, please come out. If you know a military family that wants to um, add a four-legged friend to their family or maybe just another to the mix, we'd love to have you out there. And um, again, on uh, Veterans Day, November 11th, 2022, from noon to four, Jacksonville Humane Society, Southside Boulevard. Um, my wife and I are going to be sponsoring the adoption fees for military families, service members, and veterans. Absolutely, Chris. And that is your upcoming Friday. So this Friday, you can go if if you are looking at a military family. Chris will help you with the adoption fee on your cat or dog. We take a break. More to do, though, as Chris mentioned. I do want to remind you, there is a video version of the show that you can see, thanks to Justin at Nova Productions. It's on Chris's website, Chris's YouTube. Just search Bro Shoe Law, and you will find the information you need. By the way, 904-201-1771 is how you get a hold of Chris. More to do with Ethan, more to do with Chris. When we come back 104.5 WOKV Jacksonville's news and talk will be right back the seven o'clock hour 104.5 WOKV Jacksonville's news and talk and we are still protecting military families for another half hour right here on WOKV or on YouTube on Facebook anywhere you can find Chris Brochu the video version of the show thanks to Justin and Nova Productions but Chris is all over Instagram Facebook YouTube all you got to search is the legal bro the legal bro. It's yeah, catchy, Chris. I'm I not like a it. I'm not a surfer. I had um, a lot of my friends from college and childhood just call me bro. They might just uh, be too lazy to add the shoe, right? Bro shoe, so That's they true. just shorten it to bro. So the legal bro, like and subscribe, Facebook and YouTube, trying to grow that audience. The whole purpose is to inform our military families, veterans, service members about their military legal rights. We talk about some um, current events and and different things. We're going to be trying to pump the content a little bit more here um, over the next year because of the fact that we have so many people that are interested in learning about their rights. And I think the only way that we can really, as a society, grow is if we sort of close that information gap. We have all of these insurance companies and businesses that understand their rights. And, um, you know, oftentimes they may not even be necessarily trying to um, pull the wool over somebody's eyes, but we just need to make sure that all of our civilians and and military families and consumers understand their rights so that we're all on an equal playing field and that we can all, um, you know, get the compensation we deserve and, and, enter into the best deal and arrangement for our families. And with that being said, the family household, I don't know if if there's anything more sacred to an American family than the American household, right? I mean, literally, when you think about America, you think of any anybody can make it and everybody owns a house, right? The white picket fence. That's it. And who better to talk about that today than Ethan, first party property, and we are on the second half of this hour. The first half, if you missed it, you go back to YouTube and Facebook and everywhere. We talked about Hurricane Ian and some of the things that um, 
that you need to do to file those claims and why it's so time sensitive. But on the second half, we're going to talk about, you know, we're kind of up here in the northeast corner of Florida in Jacksonville. And I know, um, Ethan, you're down in Melbourne. Um, So we might be a little bit more insulated than, say, a Miami or a panhandle from hurricanes. But we've got to talk about how even in northeast Florida, your insurance policy needs to be um, beneficial to you and maybe not necessarily the bare bones cheapest. And one of the things we talked about at break was the um, rain wa- – what was it? Uh, what Water damage. Water damage, uh, excuse me. So exclusions. If you could, Ethan. Yeah. And before we jump into that, I just want to also let people know as far as Hurricane Ian goes – you have two years to report those claims before you're barred from being able to to report it. So it, it's very important to get that done before that time period happens. Ethan, uh, real quick, on the two years, um, is that to notify your insurance or to file a lawsuit? To notify your insurance, uh, the statute of limitation for filing a, a lawsuit for a breach of the insurance contract is five years. But to get to that point, you would have had to have a denial or underpayment which would have mean you had to have reported the claim to begin with. And it, that reporting period to the insurance company is two years. So super important, folks, if you, if you are listening right now to what Ethan is saying, in order to file a lawsuit, you have a first step. So your second step is filing a lawsuit. But before you can ever get to step two, if you even need to, you have to make sure that you hit step one within two years, which is reporting that damage to your homeowner insurance company. Right. Now, getting into the second question of, uh, I blanked on it again. I almost said rainwater. Tell, uh, tell us about so, it. So a lot of times when we're shopping for our insurance policy, we're just looking for the cheapest premium. And that's fine. It, you know, life is expensive. We're looking for the best value. But it can come back to bite you when it comes to your your property insurance policy. You know, it's important to speak with your agent about what are all of the exclusions and exceptions of the policy. One thing that we're seeing a lot more and more now are policies that have a $10,000 water loss cap. If if you have a a water loss in your home, whether it's a pipe burst, anything of that sort, $10,000 to deal with that loss is usually not going to be enough. Um, if you have to call out a, a remediation contractor to bring out dryers to to dry out your property, or if it then gets to a point of there being mold, and then sometimes you also see these mold caps also up $10,000, that's something that you want to speak to your insurance agent about to see how much it will cost, the difference in your pr- premium of going with a policy that does not have those caps on it. Because Two of the most common losses that you'll experience here in Florida are either a water loss from whether it's an interior pipe burst or from a leaking roof. And then the second part is a roof claim. So those are the two parts of the policy that you want to be looking at. I'm, I've also had clients come to me now showing me that their insurance agents are shopping them policies that exclude their roof. And it's like at that point, if you're you're capped on water damage, your roof is excluded from the policy then what are you really insuring at the end of the day when you're blocking yourself out from two of the most common claims that happen to homeowners here in Florida? And most of us, I mean, I don't, I don't do any um, first party property or homeowners insurance claims, so I wouldn't even know what the most, um, I, I guess, uh, claimed damage is. So knowing that you know those are two of the most important things if you're a uh, a Florida homeowner. And again, could you just repeat those one more time, Ethan? Roof, and 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 water losses. Water whether loss. wh- whether it's a result of water coming in through the roof, or just a pipe burst in in, in the home, or just some other sort of interior water event of that nature. And even though we don't get um, hit by you know it, you you see other parts of Florida, and and maybe you all saw this in Melbourne, but I know Jacksonville in the last twenty five thirty years we might get a category two off the coast or something, but I don't think we've had necessarily a directed. I know St. Augustine got pretty beat up several years back um, with some bad flooding, Um, but we do have a number of storms here in the summer that are pretty ferocious. 
Can you talk us through some of the storms? So even if it's not yeah. a tropical storm or a hurricane, what type of storm damage do you see? Here in Florida, in almost every part of Florida, we still see a lot of hail, hail, hail storms and also wind storms. Without it being a, a named storm or a hurricane, you have storms that pass through with 60, 70, 80. I've seen up to 107 mile per hour winds on unnamed storms passing through. And that can cause an immense amount of damage to somebody's roof. I mean, that's ripping shingles off. You, you have a bad hailstorm. You, they can completely decimate the, the lifespan of somebody's roof at that point. I forgot to ask you, too, on the first side of the break, before a major storm is coming in, would it also make sense to take pictures of your property before the storm hits? Absolutely. The, the more documentation you have, the better. If being able to show your property before the loss and after the loss, videos as well. I've, I've had clients who it's helped their case where, you know, the insurance company, let's say it's a hailstorm, the insurance company's trying to say, well, well, the hailstorm didn't hit your home because we have a report that shows that it, it didn't. And the client has a video from that date and time showing, you know, the golf ball size hail smashing their property. So, yeah, documentation. Do you... um. Do you know how uh, do you know how much it or can you tell us how much it costs for a uh, Florida homeowner to um, hire you or your firm or somebody that handles first party property? How much does it cost them out of pocket? If anything, do you do it contingent? Can we talk about some of that? It costs them nothing out of pocket. We operate on a contingency. We don't get paid unless you get paid. No, no recovery, no fee. Any, if there are any costs involved, if filing a lawsuit or retaining experts and engineers, we advance those costs and they're recouped once we make a recovery for you. Which that seems like you all would have to um, advance, you know, money for these experts that climb up on roofs and we do. Um, you know, are the ones that are able to, uh, you know, do the engineering or construction or. Um, hey, this is what should have happened, but or this is what it's valued at, and this is what they valued at, right? I mean, a- absolutely, and we, we advance the cost of that. So when you hire us, you're, you're not just hiring us, you're hiring our, t- our team of experts that we bring along to assist. And the insurance company has their team. Now you reach out to us, now you'll have your own team as well. And Ethan, so we talked about different types of, of policies and, and what – some of these caps are related to water loss or mold. What um, I know during the break, we talked about flood insurance, how that might be a separate policy. Yes. Is that something that Florida homeowners should consider even if they don't live near, you know, live on the beach? I mean, I, I would say they should at least get a quote for it to see if it's something that they could entertain being able to afford. Because one of the sad things that I think we're going to see with the storm that has hit the southwest part of our state is that. A lot of that damage, uh, the insurance companies are going to claim that it's not water damage, but it's actual flood damage, and it's going to be excluded from the policy. And with most people, they have flood insurance because their mortgage company required them to do so for being in a flood zone. But if they're not in a flood zone, a lot of times they don't get that coverage. So I I think everyone should take a look at and get a quote to see if it's something they they could at least consider doing. And how how do you evaluate the... um the property claim as a whole. I mean, how do, how do you put a number? If somebody called you and said, Ethan, I need you to help with my property insurance claim. They lowballed me. They um, are trying to get me to accept something that I think is is not worth the value. They've denied my claim. They're delaying it, right? They keep asking for documentation after documentation. Wh- wh- how do you put a number on what somebody's claim value is worth? And then um, you talked about attorney's fees on first-party property. How does that come into play as well? So we, we evaluate the, the value of the claim by getting one of our experts out there. We do our own assessment of the property. We have an estimate put together for how much the repairs are, gonna, are going to cost in comparison to what the insurance company is outlining that they will cost. Uh, as far as attorney's fees go, Here in the state of Florida, we have a statute that provides, and also it's part of most of the insurance policy contracts because they also follow the statute that the insurance company, so long as you prevail against them, they have to pay your attorney's fees. I will note that that's something that is under constantly under attack. 
but as of right now, it's that still stands. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, you're going to want to tune in for this, folks. We're going to talk about that in a moment. What the Florida legislature is doing to first-party property claims. There are a number of things out there. Obviously, we've got some groups saying that property insurance claims are frivolous. We've got homeowners that are saying that um, their reasonable claims are being denied. And obviously, there's a lot to kind of unpack there. But um, Ethan, are you buying what we're seeing in the news where we've got all these insurance companies leaving the state? A- absolutely not. Uh, I, I, I personally think that the insurance crisis that they're talking about is fake and it's just an opportunity for the insurance companies to just consistently raise premiums on the Florida homeowner. And the the war on fraudulent insurance claims it's it's very overstated. At the end of the day in every industry they're going to be bad actors. They're they're bad attorneys, right? But every roofing contractor isn't bad, every public adjuster isn't bad. It's the insurance company's war on not wanting the homeowner to be represented and and protected. And that's what's happening now. So it's being put out there that, oh, there, there are tons of insurance companies leaving the state of Florida. They're all going going into bankruptcy or receivership. And, and it's just completely overstated and overblown. It's the insurance companies, with each special legislative session that they have, they're just slowly trying to chip away and take more rights away from the property owner. Because, I mean, ultimately, at least when I see the the headlines, right? Millions of Floridians or whatever it was are are now having to self-insure because they can't find insurance. Or go, I, to, or I go read, to citizens. Say that again. Or, or go to citizens insurance, the, the the insurance company that's backed by the state of Florida. Right, right. And and I see that and I I do some research and I'm like, well, is this because of what you said? They can't get people to pay higher premiums or is it just cutting into their profitability to the point where they don't think it's worthwhile anymore, which is the right as a business, right? But I think it's more more so that, but it's it's made it's it's under the guise of all of these frivolous claims, right? Right. And and what and at the end of the day, what the frivolous claims are are them simply having to make good on the policies that they've entered into, their contracts that they entered into, and the amount of fraud is exaggerated. The, what the insurance companies are calling fraudulent claims are simply claims that they have to pay out on that they don't want to pay out on because it's cutting in to their bottom line. I agree with you. And and I think that the saddest part to me is that you have all of these Floridians and military families and consumers that dutifully and faithfully pay their premium every single month on time, making sure that the insurance company gets their money So that if they ever need it, they're covered and years and years and years go by without anybody doing anything. And the one time they need them. Now here's a denial with a bunch of excuses that don't make sense. Your your damage is wear and tear. Your damage is previously existing damage. You know, if it's a roof claim there, I've even seen on there, there is foot traffic on your noted on your roof, you know. It, it gets kind of outrageous. A lot of Canadian geese up there just stomping <laughs> around, huh? Yeah. So what what is it that um, that homeowners can do when they look at buying a policy, and what is the most bang for their buck? I mean, what what should their policy include if they're buying a house here in Florida? Make sure that for your for one thing, make sure that the personal property portion of your policy covers the amount of and the value of the things that you have. Something that I've seen unfortunately happen to people also are not taking into account personal items that aren't well enough insured under the policy. For example, weapons. You know, it's Florida. A lot of people have guns. Sure. I've seen I've had a client come to me with a claim. He's and, and you know, a lot of times part of your homeowner's insurance policy, it covers theft of your of your items. He had thirty thousand dollars worth of weapons. Well, th- the cap on his policy is twenty five hundred dollars, and that's that's all that he got. So, if you have certain things, if you have certain hobbies, or you have more expensive items, make sure that you're getting coverages that cover all of those. That same gentleman had a very valuable coin collection, but under his insurance policy, the cap on that was fifty dollars. Wow. Yeah, fifty dollars. Fifty dollars for his 
$30,000 worth of coins and gold and silver that his grandfather left for him. Cool. So it, it's it's things like that. But then on a, just on a more general basic level, making sure that you're okay with that $10,000 uh, water cap if that's a part of your policy, making sure that your your roof isn't excluded from the policy that you know some insurance agent found you this very low premium on. Wow. So any of you Florida uh, homeowners or uh, gun owners out there listening, I know there are a lot of you. I get um, all the calls and I love it because people tell me what they want to hear and what um, you know what what legal areas they need information about what types of things they like us talking about, what claims they have questions about, what areas they need help in. But Ethan just talked about the best thing that we can do as Floridians, which is make sure that our families are protected before we need it. So if you are a gun owner or if you own a home in Florida, please make sure that you have the right coverage on your home because one day you may need um, to tap into it and you it, it's one of those things you feel good about it because you can get to sleep at night and you hope you never need it. But if you do, right. hopefully it's there and hopefully the It'll insurer does the right thing. Absolutely. Casey, we're running out of time here. I don't know. Uh, we are. Hey, real quick off of that. Yeah. This is probably, this is like an insurance question. So, you know, uh, but if you have like the amount of coverage, right, you just said like somebody didn't have enough coverage and like, that's all they got. If you buy like an incredible amount of coverage, do you then have to prove that your stuff costs that much, or will they just pay it, or they should just pay it out, right? If you have the coverage, they're going to they're going to assess the value of the items that you're claiming are lost. They'll make you fill out a sheet stating out what each of them are. Gotcha. And they 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 will cross reference it. They they have their own internal people who look at the value of what certain items are and will assess numbers to that. So you got to have the coverage, and then you got to make sure it, it adds up. I got you. All right. Hey, uh, yeah, we we do only have a couple minutes left, Chris, to answer your question. So we'll. We'll talk about pets for vets in just a second, but Ethan, I want you to let people know where you're at. If you've just listened over the last hour, uh, YouTube, Facebook, WOKV, WOKV.com, wherever you're listening, if you can hear my voice right now and you just heard the last hour and think that Ethan could be able to help you uh, in any way, uh, how would you like people to contact you? How can they contact you? You can find me on Instagram at Attorney Bab. Uh, that's Attorney B A B B. You can also give me a call at 855-499-LOSS. Uh, that's 8594, I'm sorry, 855-499-5677. And, or go to my website at ethanbab.com. That's Perfect. absolutely incredible. And uh, mine, if you need to get at me, is um, my new uh, my new wannabe lawyer influencer yeah. uh, YouTube and Facebook, The Legal Bro. I told you you'd get there one my, day. Uh, <laughs> my branding team thinks I need a, a better brand than um, just Chris. So um, that's what we're going with, The Legal Bro. So get at me on uh, YouTube, Facebook, like and subscribe. And if you have anything that you want us to talk about, Current events, um, anything in the news, I mean, the amount of people that send me stuff, hey, why did this person not get the death penalty? Hey, why why is this a law? Why is this um, denial acceptable? We want to cover it all, and, um, you know, we want to we answer your questions. So please reach out, get at me on social media, at The Legal Bro. Find my website, www.broshulaw.com. If you have a case, case at broshulaw.com case at brochulaw.com telephone number 904-201-1771 and again just a reminder november 11 2022 from noon to four jacksonville humane society on Southside boulevard um we've partnered with them my wife and i so we are going to be doing an event called pets for vets at jacksonville humane society on november 11th veterans day if you're a military family service member or veteran Please bring your family out there. We are going to um, be there to meet you, and we are also going to cover any adoption fees for the dog or cat that you purchase that day from noon to four. So if you want to add a four-legged friend to the mix or um, you know, maybe a new one, we'd be happy to see you, and, and we appreciate your service. Yeah, absolutely, and that's coming up this Friday, and uh, I wish I had like something to promote. You guys have like cool Instagrams. I just... Casey. 
I mean, promote your uh, your ESPN show. There you go. Well, we are on ESPN six ninety from three to seven every single day. Uh, but I don't have I don't have. You know who advice. else we need to promote? Justin and Nova Productions. Our boy Justin. Yeah, that's why if you're on the YouTube, if you're on the Facebook, uh, the Instagram, and you find the video version of this stuff, that's from Justin and Nova Productions. So. The best. If you are a small business owner in Northeast Florida, and your content is lacking. That is the guy you need to call Justin at Nova Productions. Nova, N-O-V-A Productions. Get at him. There you go. It's just as easy as that for Ethan and Chris. I'm Casey Kurtz. We appreciate you listening. We're back next week protecting military families on 104.5 WOKV, Jacksonville's News and Talk.